Okay, so we're looking at the 2021 Maths Mock Paper 1. And question 8 is asking us to write the recurring decimal 1.233 continuous in the form P over Q. Okay, so what we first want to do is separate it out. So it's going to be 1.2 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003 plus 0 0.0003 and so on. Now, this looks very similar to a geometric sequence. As you can see, there's a common difference here of 0 0.01 and that'll continue on down through the sequence. So because the difference is greater than zero but less than one, that means that we can find the sum to infinity, which if we look at our log tables, we can see that the sum to infinity is a over one minus or. We're just gonna ignore this first half of the equation for a second, and we're going to take the sum of infinity is going to be a, which is 0 0.03 over one minus 0 0.1. So we can simplify that down again into 0 0.03 over 0 0.9. Now we don't want any decimals to be in this fraction. So we're going to multiply everything by 100. So we're going to get 3 over 90, which is the same as 1 over 30. Now we're going to go back in and add that sum to infinity to the 1.2 that we had at the start. So it's going to be 1.2 plus 1 over 30. 1.2 is also equal to 36 over 30. So therefore we have an answer of 37 over 30. And if we go into our calculator and type in 37 over 30, you'll see that once we press this button here, it gives us 1.23 continuous. So we were correct in our answer there. Now part B is saying that when a loan of P is repaid in equal repayments of an amount A at the end of each T equal periods of time, where T is the periodic compound interest rate expressed as a decimal, the formula below can be used to find the amount of each rep repayment. And then it gives us the amortization formula. Then it asks us to show how this formula is derived. You may use the formula for the sum of a finite geometric series. So if we were to go to the financial maths section of the log tables, we see here that there is a formula for present value. So we're gonna write that down here where P is equal to F over one plus I T. Now we can use this formula to find the present value for each individual repayment. So the first would be a over one plus i to the one. P2 would be a over one plus i squared. And therefore P T would be a over one plus i T. So if we have the present values of each individual repayment, when they're all added together, they should equal the final value of the total amount needed to be repaid. Okay, so if we go back to our log tables, we see here that there is the sum for a geometric sequence. So again, we're going to write that down here. S of n is equal to a one minus r n all over one minus r. So we can use this formula to find the total value of p being if we added every single term of this together all the way down to the teeth term. So before we do that, we need to find our values for a, which would be the first term, which is a over one plus i, and then or, a little trickier, we need to find the ratio. So to find that, we can simply divide the second term by the first. As we know, dividing fractions, we can simply multiply it by the inverse.
the a's cancel and one of the one plus i's cancel. So that gives us a value of r is equal to one over one plus i. Okay, so now we just need to sub those values into our formula here. So s of n would be p. a is a over one plus i multiplied by one minus r, which is one over one plus i, all to the power of t, divided by one minus one over one plus i. Okay, now we don't like there being that one over one plus i on the bottom, so what we're going to do is multiply everything by one plus i over one plus i. So when that goes into the top, it'll cancel out there, So it would be a one minus one over one plus i all to the t. And then on the bottom, it'll go into each term. So it'll be one plus i minus and the one plus i um, will cancel there on the bottom. So that'll give us one. Okay, so these two terms will cancel and we'll bring up the i here. So we get pi is equal to a one minus one over one plus i all to the t. So we know that when we put an indice on a fraction, it can be applied to both the numerator and the denominator. Um, so that means this can be simplified down into pi is equal to a one minus, now one to the power of anything will always equal one over one plus i all to the power of t. Okay, now we want to simplify this bracket down again. So we know that if we wanted to make the denominators the same here, one would be the same as one plus i to the power of t over one plus i to the power of t. So we can say that it's one plus i to the power of t minus one over one plus i to the power of t. Now we can see in the question that we want to get the a on its own. So we're going to just simply divide across by this entire fraction, which would be the same as multiplying it by the inverse. So we finally get a is equal to p i 1 plus i to the power of t all over 1 plus i to the power of t minus 1, which as we can see is the exact same as the question we were given above. Okay, so now moving on to part c. It says John is 30 years old and plans to retire when he is 65 years old. He contributes 700 euro at the start of each month to a pension fund earning 4% annual equivalent rate. The pension will pay a lump sum on his retirement date. So it's first asking us to show that the monthly equivalent interest rate to an AER of 4% correct to four significant figures is 0.3274%. So what we want to do first is go to our financial maths in the log tables and see here the compound interest formula of f is equal to p 1 plus i all to the t. Okay, so since we have 4%, we're going to say f is going to be 104. And then our p is going to be 100. 1 plus i, because i is what we're looking for, and t is going to be 12 for 12 months. So to explain why we did all of this, basically, at the end of 12 months, it should have gone from 100 to 104. So now we are going to divide across by 100, which will give us 1.04 is equal to one plus i to the power of 12. So now we need to find the 12th root of 1.04, which is, if we go to our calculator, which gives us 1.0032374. And we don't need all these numbers, but I'm gonna write them all down for now, is gonna be one plus i. Take away one from this side, we get i is equal to 0 0.003274 to the four significant figures, 
which is the same as 0.3274%. Okay, now moving on to part two. It says to show that John will receive 632,045 euros, correct to the nearest euro, as a lump sum when he retires. So the first thing we want to do is see how long he will be saving this for. So he's going to take out the money when he's 65 and he's now 30. So that gives us 35 years. Multiplied by 12 for each month is going to give us 420 months. So now we're going to do a small table to make things simpler for us. So we're going to have N, which is going to be the amount of payments, P, which is going to be the money paid in each month, and F, which is going to be the final value. So N will go from 1, 2, all the way down to 420. P will be 700 each time, all the way down to 700 here. And then F, our value will be 700 times 1.003274, all to the power of 420. Now this is simply using the same formula that we use up above for compound interest. So then the next time it's going to go down by one. So 419, all the way down to here, where it's going to be to the power of one. So from this table, it makes it easier for us to figure out our values for A, R, and N. So A is going to be our first term, which is going to be the 700 times 1.003274, all to the power of 420. R is the difference between them. So each time, it's being multiplied by 1 over 1.003274. And then n is simply our 420 again. Okay, now if we go back to our log tables, to the sequences and series section, we can see here that the sum of n of a geometric sequence is a times 1 minus r to the power of n all over 1 minus r. So subbing in r values, s of 420 is going to be equal to 700 times 1.003274 to the power of 400, all multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1.003274 to the power of 420, all divided by 1 minus 1 over 1.003274. Now we can simply put that all into our calculator. And once we put that all in, we get an answer. And since we want to have it to the nearest euro, we can see that our final payment is going to be 632,045 euros, which if we check is the exact same as we are given in the question. So we have done everything correctly. Okay, so now moving on to part three. It says that John invests his lump sum at 3% AER. He receives a regular payment at the end of each month for the next 25 years. Calculate the value of his monthly payment correct to the nearest euro. So the first thing we want to do is to figure out how many months we need to be working with. So 25 years times 12 months is going to give us 300 months. Now we need to convert our AER into a monthly interest. So we're going to use the same method 3% gives us 103 equals 100 times 1 plus i to the power of 12. Divide across by 100 
equal to 1 plus i to the power of 12. The 12th root of 1.03 is going to be equal to 1 plus i. And see here the 12th root is going to be 1.00246627 is equal to 1 plus i. Taking away 1, we get i is equal to 0 0.002466. I like to leave it just to four significant figures. Okay, so because the bank is going to give him back a equal amount at an equal interval of each month, we can actually use the amortization formula here. So if we were to write that out, it is A is equal to P times I 1 plus I to the power of T all over 1 plus I to the power of T minus 1. So now we just have to sub in the values that we have. Okay, so now we can simply put that all into our calculator. So then we should get that answer there. Since we only need it to be to the nearest euro, our final answer is 2,984 euros. And that is question eight all done.